man, I really like my new laptop. And it's mildly interesting how thin it is compared to my old one. I think I'm going to post this to Reddit. Gaming laptop? That's going to be some kind of oxymoron. Well, yeah, but it, it says gamers on it. Hope you're moving that thing on the regular. Otherwise, gaming laptops are a huge waste over a standard tower. Really? But, I mean, thin, quote, unquote, gaming laptops are stupid in most cases. You can't fit a freaking good graphics card and cool it when you have less than 10 millimeters to work with. Well, geez, but I'm sorry. There's no way that could be considered a gaming laptop. That'll overheat playing frickin' CS. Well, I mean, I, I play Cyberpunk on it. I don't understand why companies push their laptops to the limits of how slim they could be. Yeah, but I mean... Repeat after me. There is no such thing as a gaming laptop. Well, I mean, I like it. The internet is an amazing wealth of information. But sometimes a little bit too much internet can get in the way of you finding what actually works for you or what you're looking for in the world of tech. Today I'm going to be looking at the Asus Republic of Gamers G16 2024 edition gaming laptop. And as you can tell by the name, it's marketed towards gamers. Now it's been about 14 years since the last time I bought a gaming laptop. And let me introduce you to the Asus Republic of Gamers G73 17 inch gaming laptop. And as you can see, this thing is a monstrous beast. This thing is almost nine pounds, has an i7 processor, a 60 series Nvidia graphics card, and cost $1,500 back in 2010, which is a little bit over $2,000 today. So in comparison, this G16 has a nine series Intel processor, a 70 series Nvidia graphics card, and costs $1,699 on sale in today's dollars. So even if we're looking at both of these laptops in their own time, the G16 is actually the better value and has more power, along with being substantially smaller and lighter. I can honestly say, after having used this laptop for a while, I really love it. It's a great laptop, it fits my lifestyle, it's exactly what I'm looking for. But if I paid too much attention to the internet, I would have come to the conclusion that this was the wrong laptop to buy. First of all, just the idea of a gaming laptop to begin with. Some people take severe offense to that, to the point where they will deride people who buy a gaming laptop because they didn't buy a gaming desktop, or even better, build one of their own. The argument is, a gaming desktop will give you better quality parts, better cooling, and a lower price point. And even if somebody does accept that the idea of a gaming laptop is viable, have an issue with this particular laptop because of how thin it is. The argument there being that a thicker laptop would have better cooling, be able to give you better performance, and wouldn't be as compromised because of how thin it is. And then yet another group will look at this particular G16 and say, I bought the wrong one, because this is the one with the 4070 and 16 gigabytes of RAM. They will point to the 4080 being significantly more powerful and coming with a vapor chamber, and also that the RAM is soldered, so you're stuck with those 16 gigabytes of RAM, so you'd be better off buying 32 gigs. So let's look at each of these arguments independently, but also look at the bigger picture and why I chose this laptop in particular. So let's look at the desktop being the superior gaming machine. And in many metrics, I absolutely agree. You're gonna have better cooling. You got more power available. We don't have to worry about battery life. You're gonna have better quality components at a cheaper price and it's upgradable. There's a lot of pros except for the fact that it's a desktop. I enjoy traveling and being able to have a laptop I can throw in my bag, take with me, and just be able to set up in my hotel room is amazing. Plus, I take this laptop back and forth to work. It's my kind of main machine on the go. But I've even seen arguments that if you need something portable, why don't you just get a small form factor PC? And that's assuming that I don't mind carrying around something the size of a lunchbox, along with a display, along with a keyboard, along with a mouse, and then be tethered to the wall because there is no battery. To me, that sounds like a lot of compromises. Or the other argument is if you want a PC game on the go, just get something like a Steam Deck, which I also have. But the problem with the Steam Deck is that it's a gaming device. That is what you will be doing on it. You will be gaming. If you want to make a PC experience out of it, you can do it with a Bluetooth mouse and keyboard and probably a bigger display. But again, now we're getting into this idea of that small form factor PC. And realistically, the Steam Deck actually takes up more space in my backpack than this laptop does just slid into the laptop sleeve. So okay, gaming laptops make sense. So why this super thin one? Why not something a little bit thicker with better cooling or better acoustics or other things along those lines? Well, part of the reason is I'm coming at this from a different angle. I didn't come at this looking for a gaming laptop per se. 
If you look at my last laptop, which was an HP Spectre, it's a thin and light laptop. And I liked it quite a bit, but when it came to playing a game on it, it just couldn't do it. The Intel integrated graphics just couldn't keep up with modern games, and even with older games. There's some weird driver issues or something with Intel graphics that just didn't seem to play nice. So it was a little frustrating if I wanted to play a game on the go on that laptop. So the angle I came at it was, I'm looking for something thin and light, but with a nice screen and is able to play a few games, and I happen across the G16 2024 edition. And some things that this has going for it is an absolutely incredible screen and some amazing speakers that no other PC laptop I've ever heard can come close to meeting. So it's just an additional bonus that something this thin is not using integrated graphics, but is actually running a 4070 graphics card, which are all good reasons to get the G16. But then I bought this one, which a lot of people would say is the wrong one. All versions of the G16 have the same screen, which is amazing, the same speakers, which is amazing. Where they differ is mostly in the graphics cards and in the RAM. The main difference between the 4070 and the 4080, other than the 4080 being significantly more powerful, is that the 4070 has a three fan setup, whereas the 4080 has a two fan setup with a vapor chamber. Now, from all accounts, the volume is about the same on the fans, but the 4070 has a little bit of higher pitch to it because one of the fans is smaller. And so some people have seen that as a complete deal breaker just because of the fan noise. And the truth is, under load, while playing games, you do hear the fans. And, you know, I've looked at a few other laptops. I just recently looked at an Alienware uh, R16, and I would say volume is pretty comparable between the two. Um, it just, it's there, but I just don't really care that much. Keep in mind that the modern gaming laptop is a different beast than it was before. What you used to do is give up the battery life and the weight to be able to get that power. But now you can see I'm not giving up the weight at all, and you can completely turn off the GPU, and you have a silent, Ultrabook with great battery life. But then the biggest issue people will bring up is the 16 gigabytes of RAM, which is soldered to the motherboard, therefore unupgradable. Now this very much depends on your use case. And for some people, this absolutely will be a deal breaker. But for my use case, I play games, I do research, I have dozens of tabs open at a time sometimes, and I do video editing, and I have never felt RAM constrained at 16 gigabytes. Now, of course, there's the argument of future-proofing. If you look at the laptop just running with nothing, you see about 50% of the RAM used, so that's concerning. You're worried about running out of RAM, especially as things get more RAM intensive. But also remember the way Windows uses RAM. If it's sitting around doing nothing, it's wasted RAM. It will fill it. And then when you start doing something that's more RAM intensive, it'll start moving things out of RAM so you can use that for your video editing or for your games or whatever else you're gonna do. So sure, for some intensive use cases, yes, absolutely go for that 32 gigabyte. But here's where the other issue comes in. Sure, in a world where money just doesn't matter, that 4080 with 32 gigabytes of RAM is going to be the better buy. It's gonna be something that has more power to it, more future-proof, less noise, I get it. But let's look at the prices. I bought this 4070 16 gigabyte G16 for $16.99 at Best Buy. It was on sale and I see the sale pop up every once in a while. Let's say I did wanna get that 4080 with the 32 gigabytes of RAM. Keep in mind, this is the same screen, the same speakers, the same processor, the same laptop other than those two specs. I'm jumping to $26.99. That's a $1,000 jump just to get a little bit better performance and a little bit more RAM. Now, depending who you are, $1,000 might not matter, but for me, $1,000 is the difference between actually buying the laptop and just not buying it at all. And if your argument is, sure, then just get the 4070 with 32 gigabytes of RAM. That sounds great, except for here in the US at least, the only SKUs available are the 4070 with 16 gigabytes of RAM or the 4080 or the 4090 with 32 gigabytes of RAM. So why do I like this thing so much despite a chunk of the internet saying I shouldn't? I wanna go back to the speakers just for one moment. I really can't demonstrate it to you on here. You have to hear it for yourself, but there's a sound stage that I just have not heard in a laptop. There's stereo separation, I can locate sounds, and there's just a depth to the sound that just is surprising to me coming from a laptop. To the point where I'd rather play games and watch movies listening to the speakers rather than putting on headphones, which to me is incredibly high praise for a laptop. I really can't think of any cons for these speakers. And then the screen is fantastic. It's an OLED from Samsung. Um, the 14 inch version has a higher resolution, but actually I think the 1600p display is the perfect resolution for the 16 inch size. It is HDR, 240 Hertz, and it just looks great. It's bright and colorful. And another huge thing that I haven't heard a lot of people talk about is its anti-reflective properties. 
It's a glossy screen, but don't think of it like the glossy screens of old. It seems to have the same technology that the S24 has, being able to have the glossy screen, but really, really cut down on reflections. Enough so that it completely negates the argument for getting the matte screen. The matte screen does cut down on reflections, but it also significantly impacts the contrast of the screen, especially in a well-lit room. Really, if I had to pick out a con for this screen, it's that if you're using the screen in low brightness, you can see a little bit of a grain pattern in kind of uniform gray areas. And this is the same thing that happened in the Galaxy S24. On the phone, it was kind of annoying enough to me that I actually returned the S24 Ultra I had for a little while. But on this laptop, because of the viewing distances and the size of the screen, it honestly doesn't bother me whatsoever. I can see it if I look for it, but I just don't notice it. So to wrap up, let's just look at the big picture. Let's ignore the specs, let's ignore the benchmarks, let's ignore all the internet arguments. This laptop is a thin and light laptop with great build quality, an amazing screen, incredible speakers that can play any game I throw at it at native resolution at frame rates that I enjoy for $16.99. I honestly can't think of any other laptop on the market that fits my needs as well as this one does. And of course, this may not apply to you. There's something else that might work better for you. Sometimes we just gotta take that step back and get away from those arguments, get away from that internet bubble and look at things for ourselves and find the things that work best for us, even if it's not the best for somebody else. And on that note, never stop having fun. Thank you.